Welcome to another video in our video series called Think6, where we discuss trends and aspects of what may become the next generation in wireless communication and what we will eventually call 6G. Today I would like to introduce you to the main research areas identified by academia and key industry players. So let's get started. If you study today's available literature on what 6G may look like, you come across several 6G vision papers of the wireless industry's well-known key players. All of them list sub-terahertz and terahertz frequency support as one key aspect of a 6G communication standard. The typical explanation provided is that there is much wider bandwidth available at these higher frequencies and therefore data rates in the one terabit per second realm seem feasible. In the beginning, other application areas might be an even more pragmatic use case for terahertz frequencies. These areas include accurate positioning, sensing, location awareness and gesture recognition, allowing resolutions down to sub-centimeter and millimeter level, um, and therefore enabling these type of applications. However, as we all know, there is no free lunch. Researchers worldwide have to overcome tremendous challenges within the next decade to make this technology component work. It starts with the right semiconductor technology that can generate the necessary output power to overcome the higher path loss, but be scalable at the same time. There's always a trade-off between speed, output power, and mass producing these components at an affordable cost. As the perfect transistor technology does not exist, it is still a compromise that the industry has to find. The push into new frequency territory usually demands a discussion of an adequate waveform and coding schemes to enable the targeted high data rates. As sub-terahertz and terahertz waves travel realistically 100 to 150 meter, using a multi-carrier transmission scheme such as OFDM at these frequencies becomes at least debatable. One reason is that the advantage of flexible scheduling of hundreds of users in time and frequency domain might be negligible, given the achievable coverage based on the technology's current state. A sub-terahertz hotspot may only have to serve a few users at any given time, and with the wide bandwidth available, high data rates per user seem to be very reasonable. Second, a single carrier transmission technique offers a lower peak to average power ratio, allowing the power amplifier to operate at a higher compression point, enabling higher overall output power and contributing to an improvement of the link budget. It will be interesting to see what the industry's standardization bodies will agree upon. At the same time, not just only the communication aspects need to be taken into account when defining waveforms. For many, one 6G use case will be location awareness of your environment, providing the user with another sense, if you will. What I mean by that is integrating the aspects of sensing into the standard. In other words, merge the worlds of wireless communication and radar. The challenge here is that both communication and radar have different requirements in terms of waveform being used. There are many more challenges, but let's leave it at that for now. It will be also interesting to see what coding scheme enable terabit per second data transmissions. Today's coding principles approach Shannon's theorem, in other words, the physical limit. It will be interesting to see what's left in the tank, if there's a revolution or more of an evolution. As we potentially move up in frequency again, wavelengths become even shorter. That opens up the possibility of integrating antenna arrays even higher, merely putting more antenna elements in the same physical space. In simple words, more antenna elements allow the creation of tighter beams, increase the antenna gain and help overcome the higher path loss that I mentioned earlier. With more elements, potentially more users can be served at the same time using the same physical resources. We would call that now then ultra massive MIMO. Again, this advantage comes with challenges such as increasing feeder losses. Getting the signal to the individual antenna element is not trivial. Therefore, much research concentrates on so-called on-chip antennas to minimize this effect. Next is cell-free massive MIMO, a concept proposed back in 2015. So what is it? Cell-free massive MIMO builds upon the massive MIMO concept where a few users are served simultaneously on the same physical resources in the time and frequency domain. As the name implies, there are no cell boundaries anymore. A significantly larger number of access points and antenna arrays 
is geographically distributed to serve a far lesser number of devices to realize this seamless transmission concept. The following research area is full duplex. This is not necessarily new. In fact, full duplex has always been proposed when a new G is around the corner. In a full duplex system, the transmitter and receiver will simultaneously operate on a single carrier, which in theory doubles the communication system's spectral efficiency. The challenge is the induced self-interference from transmitter to the receiver, which could only be solved with innovative but costly analog RF circuitry concepts and cancellation techniques when processing the signal digitally. With the advancements of machine learning principles in wireless communication, a full duplex system may become a reality in a 6G wireless communication standard. Another proposed method to become part of future 6G communication um, and therefore our key uh, research area is visible light communication, short VLC. This concept is part of the optical wireless communication technologies using the visible light corresponding to 384 terahertz to 789 terahertz. However, it is industry procedure or practice to use the wavelength to describe this part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and therefore we talk about 380 nanometers to 780 nanometers. In its simplest form, the transmitter is a light-emitting diode, an LED, where the transmission medium is not fiber, but air, and the receiver is a photodiode. A LED can switch between different light intensities very fast, which one can use for data modulation and transmission. The photodiode can detect these changes and therefore decode and demodulate the data. Intelligent Reflecting Surfaces, or IRS, is another exciting area of current fundamental research for 6G. The goal is to control the electromagnetic capabilities of materials, so-called metasurfaces, which act as a radiator, reflecting the incoming wave and steer it into a preferable direction to support a wireless communication link. Distributed processing is a trend that we believe will also continue with a 6G standard. Today for 5G, we have, for example, the Open RAN Alliance, an industry initiative where also Roland Schwartz is a member. From a high-level perspective, ORAN is a concept that calls for an open architecture of all elements that form the radio access network, the RAN, enabling interoperability and interconnectivity among different vendors. At the core of this architecture is a central unit, the distributed unit, and the radio unit, interconnected via defined interfaces, typically running on commercial off-the-shelf hardware, powered by virtualization software, allowing the abstraction of network functions in the form of virtual machines. Pending its commercial success for the fifth generation of wireless communication, the expectation is that 6G will reuse the general concept. With the last but not least research area, we come to an area that is expected to play a vital, integral role in a 6G wireless communication standard, machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that uses algorithms, pattern identification, and inference to learn implicitly. Today, it's already been used in data analytics for network management and orchestration. In 6G, it is expected to make its way to the air interface, become the basis for signal detection, synchronization, channel estimation, equalization, modulation, and coding. Machine learning targets basically every block of the signal processing chain that, until now, was individually optimized and required explicit knowledge of an expert programming a dedicated, rather complex software algorithm. And that brings us to the end of our video on the main 6G research areas. In the coming months, we will take a closer look at all of these individual areas as part of our Think6 video series brought to you by Roland Schwartz.